The circular flow of income. Income circulates between an economy's two main components, its households and firms. Households supply firms with factors of production. In return, they receive an income. Income is converted into expenditure, which is received by firms as revenue. This spending generates an output of goods and services from firms to households. This is the simple circular flow. Income circulates continuously between households and firms. The monetary value of income, expenditure, and output should equate. For example, if factors together earn 100 billion units of currency as an income, and assuming they all spend their income, the value of household expenditure and firms' output is also 100 billion. Each time income circulates between firms and households, it creates jobs, spending, and output. However, some income may leak out of the circular flow in the form of savings. This reduces the amount of spending which continues to circulate. For example, if 20 billion is saved, then only 80 billion continues in circulation. Financial institutions have evolved to accept this unspent income in the form of bank deposits. As income circulates and firms produce more output, machinery and other capital wears out and new capital is required. This may be funded by borrowing from the financial sector, which holds the economy's unspent income. Investment spending represents an injection back into the circular flow. In this way, savings is returned back into the economy through investments. A second leakage out of the circular flow is taxation, which is paid to the government. When taxation is spent on public goods, merit goods, and welfare transfers, it is injected back into the circular flow. Taxation may be greater than spending, which creates a fiscal surplus, or spending may be more than tax revenue, which creates a fiscal deficit. Borrowing may be required to make public sector finances balance. In the example, 15 billion is withdrawn in taxation and all is spent, so there is a budget balance. Finally, spending on imports reduces the domestic income circulating, while exports is an injection into the domestic circular flow. Payments between countries for goods and services may balance, as in this case, with 10 billion of imports balanced by 10 billion of exports. However, import spending may be greater or less than export revenue, creating a current account deficit or surplus. For an economy to be in overall equilibrium, it is not necessary that each pair of injections and withdrawals are equal, only that the sum of withdrawals and injections equate. For example, if savings equals 20 billion, taxation is 10 and imports are 30, while investment and government spending equal 10 each, and exports are 40. Injections and withdrawals are both 60 billion, and the economy is in equilibrium. Aggregate demand can be understood from the circular flow model and is a sum of household spending plus investment, government spending, and net exports. In total, aggregate demand is inversely related to the price level, with a typical aggregate demand curve sloping downwards. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk